Hello, this is Patrick, and welcome to some more Tesla news. I'm over in Rollins, Wyoming, the windiest city I've ever been to in my life. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'll, I'm going to post here in a minute when I talk about efficiency, about the drive over here and my effect on range and some pictures. It's ridiculous. But first of all, to get the big news out of the way, Model 3 was lowered by a little over $1,000 on the cost. So now the mid-range, you can get it for $42,900 in the United States with different uh, tax credits for federal and state, it actually can be below 35000 It's a little, a little bit deceptive, Elon saying basically to sell them a $35,000 car, and technically no. <laughs> it's still you know, a $42,900 car. But it does have the premium interior, has a longer range. It's a pretty good deal. If you can swing it, if you really look into how much you're spending on fuel and maintenance, I had to take our Model 3 in for service. I didn't have to take it in, apparently. I took it in because uh, I was going to Las Vegas so I could have the annual service done because I've had it about a year. I thought it'd be a good time for that. And I looked it up and they're like, wait a second, we've never done one before. We've really never done one before. Apparently, it's two years. The maintenance schedule on the Model 3 is every two years. So that's, that's really good. <laughs> uh, other than that, there's a tire rotation, so I had them do that. That's um, a little bit more frequent depending on mileage, of course. So, yeah, something to account for is you don't have oil changes or other kinds of maintenance that you have to do on the vehicle, basically just tires. Uh, although, the thing with tires, especially with a Model X, because it's so heavy and big, is they go through tires quicker. Um, so something to kind of bear in mind is your tire expense might go up with a Tesla, depending on how aggressively you drive it, too. People say if they drive real aggressively, they go through them quicker. People that are a little bit more chill um, mode don't go through them as quick. Elon also tweeted out that they're planning on doing the uh, Sentry Mode update, where it uses all the autopilot cameras to monitor your car. If it gets broken in, it can capture a video of people taking off with your stuff. <laughs> it does sound pretty cool. They also mentioned Dog Mode, so that's where uh, basically it's leaving the heater on or the air conditioner on, depending on what time of year it is, and displaying something on the screen saying, you know what, the dog's safe in here. We've got AC going, it's all good. And in the meantime, they pushed out an update over the weekend allowing for uh, blind spot warnings and also auto folding mirrors that are GPS aware. So if you're in your garage or going into your garage, it'll automatically fold them in. Kind of like how the suspension works on Teslas with air, uh, air suspension. Oh, back to making the Model 3 cheaper. Apparently over in China, Tesla is now making autopilot standard. So they're including it with the price of the vehicle because it's the tariffs and other fees and things over there. It's kind of more expensive to get a Tesla, so they're tossing in autopilot, which is which is interesting. And I could see them potentially doing that here in the United States as well over time when the tax credit goes away. Maybe that's something they would do to offset the, the loss of the tax credit. Be like, you know what? We, you know, we're not doing the $35,000 car, but you get the $40,000 car with autopilot or something like that and still, uh, you know, reducing that further like a year from now or whenever. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Would Tesla do something like that? I, I, I don't know. I guess it's all a matter of supply and demand. As long as the demand's really high, they're probably not going to reduce or give away too much more unless the demand starts kind of slipping. It sounds like they don't have a real demand problem, so I wouldn't cross my fingers on that one. There was a study that came out showing that electric cars lose 41% of the range in icy temperature, and Tesla's like, no, <laughs> that's not true. Now, that this is this is interesting, because I have a Chevy Volt, and it really would lose half, half the range. It would have 40 miles during the summer and 20 during the winter, and even during the winter, it would still run the engine whenever it got below freezing, which was like basically all winter. So that was kind of a drag. In the Tesla's, there's a lot you can do to mitigate that. So if the car is outside and not plugged in, that's probably fairly accurate. Um, and that's kind of show, what they're showing in their test. Now, if you do what's recommended is, you, you know, when there's cold temperatures, you plug in your vehicle. People do this in Wyoming here with their uh, internal combustion cars is they put block heaters in them and they plug them in so that they can start up easier in the mornings, which is interesting because that same amount of energy can get you like 50 miles of range <laughs> on an electric car. And basically, the electric batteries, they got to have a certain temperature to be happy. <laughs> I was told it was around 70 degrees. It doesn't have to be quite that high, 
to take a charge, but it does have to have a certain temperature because I, I did run out of charge in my Model S a few years ago and it would not take a charge uh, until the battery pack heated up and it required a 240 volt to heat up and charge because I was close to an outlet, but it wasn't a 240. I couldn't get it to, to go. It was, it was minus 20. So yeah, so there is an effect on electric vehicles, obviously in the cold. The question is, is it that much more than a regular vehicle? And if you do what is recommended, you have it plugged in or you have it in a garage, um, especially if you do preheating where, you know, you have it do smart conditioning and it kind of learns your schedule or you just turn it on when you're, you know, starting to get your shoes on, you give it a good 10 minutes ahead of time. It's using that power from the wall to preheat the, the car and the battery and it seems to work significantly better. Uh, I don't have any huge issues. I would say... Um, more than the cold is the wind. And this is this is what I, my main thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is this this is probably the least ideal time for traveling for me in Wyoming. I went from Riverton, Wyoming to Cheyenne overnight and back. And well, I'm on my way back right now. And on the way there, it's uh, going up in elevation. There's these huge wind gusts of over 60 miles an hour. There was just a report on, was saying 114 mile an hour gusts, which is just crazy. Uh, you can see here, there's a semi on its side from the wind. Yeah, it's it's windy. And this has a massive effect on range. So I think the, the EPA rating is at like 65 miles an hour or something like that for what you get. The roads here are 80 <laughs> on the interstate. And the wind, is it, 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 it takes a lot off of your range. So just normally going between that, that 60 miles an hour and that 80 miles an hour, you're looking at losing a pretty significant amount of your range, like 20 to 30% of it, just from driving faster and having all that resistance. And then the wind on top of that, every every 10 miles an hour or so, just it really takes a huge hit on your battery. And then the cold is not helping at all either. I'd say cold is maybe like a 20% effect on the range depending on how much you blast the heater. So it really does degrade the battery more than half on my trip between Riverton and Rollins if you're driving, you know, 75 miles an hour or so. That's something to be aware of if you're ever traveling through Wyoming with these crazy winds and the crazy cold. Anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think on, on wind. I mean, I, I think I need to do a whole video on just wind because it's highly underestimated on how much it affects vehicles. And it's not just electric vehicles, on gas vehicles as well. You notice the gas mileage goes way down when you're fighting these heavy winds. Also, um, the, the Teslas go through the winds really well and the autopilot is amazing. It, like, it, it holds the lane really well. I remember, um, well, not using autopilot on any other vehicle, especially lighter vehicles, it really blows you around and you have to go slower and you have to fight the wind. You have to, you know, hold the steering wheel the whole time and you got to be really careful whenever semis go by so they don't suck you in to them. And it just, ah, it's pain. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching so much and, and, and subscribing to this show. And if you haven't, please do subscribe. I put these videos out about once a week or so. Um, I covered the latest Tesla news that caught my attention that I think is a big deal. Why, one of the things I, I, I forgot to mention was Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell. The, they're uh, an ultra capacitor company and it sounds like they got some new battery technology that will allow for better batteries, higher, ener higher energy density, uh, lower cost to build them, and it, mainly using this dry coating electrode as opposed to a powder, which was going to make things just significantly easier in producing lithium ion batteries. So I don't know how long Tesla is going to take to integrate this, but this is probably the technology that they're needing for the semis and the trucks um, or in the Roadster to get, you know, the 600 mile range. Welcome to another Tesla trip. And today I'm going from Riverton, Wyoming to Rollins, Wyoming in my Model X 90D with winter tires. It's zero degrees outside and I'm starting out with 243 miles of range.
This is a full battery. It used to be closer to 260 when I got it. After 68,000 miles, uh, my full charge is normally around 250, 255. Uh, but in the winter time, because I've been using more energy, it's closer to around 245, 243 today. We'll see what we get. Uh, last time I made this trip with my family, we barely made it into town. We had to go slow the last half hour in because there was extreme winds. Arrived in Rollins, Wyoming at the Supercharger here at the Fairfield Inn. And <laughs> just barely 30 miles of range left, uh, saying that I could have 20 miles more potentially, although I would not trust it because it has failed on me at 12 miles left in this type of a temperature. Although it is 25 degrees here, much warmer than zero. It says I was averaging 485 kilowatts. This is actually pretty close to what it predicted, so it's not too bad. All right, since my last charge, I went 120 miles. I used 62 kilowatts out of my 90. That doesn't seem right. Seems like I used a lot more than that if I've only got 30 miles left. And that my average was 521. Looks like my average is normally 457, which is quite a bit. <laughs> Thank you guys again. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Automatic doors. Rollins is always crazy windy.